Hello again and uh, welcome back to the January 2009 BY1 paper. Uh, we're on to question number three now. Um, the first part here just uh, tells you about the diagrams in the question. Okay, so the examiner's telling you there is a molecule of starch uh, and a molecule uh, of cellulose. Okay, uh, starch and cellulose. Um, and the structures are are shown uh, underneath that first statement. Uh, what I want to help you out with to start with is just to go through these structures uh, shown in the question. Okay, now I've given you structures of starch and cellulose uh, in the notes. Okay, so if I just pull the notes up, okay, um, that are on the uh, the app. Okay, this is the diagram I've put in um, of cellulose. Okay, to start with. All right. Now, the diagram here, I've decided to use uh, detailed uh, images of the beta glucose monomer that makes up cellulose. Okay, but if I flip back now to the exam question, you can see that the examiner has actually used an abbreviated. Uh, version of the beta glucose monomer and indeed that of the alpha glucose monomer which is found in starch okay uh, so you do have to um, be aware that there are a number of ways of representing uh, molecules and their structures okay um, so just be familiar with the different ways that um, <coughs> Your teachers and examiners can represent these uh, these structures. Okay, right. If we scroll down um, to the actual questions now, okay, we've got part A, and it's asking you to name monosaccharide X and its form. So monosaccharide X there is in the cellulose structure. Okay. Now I've already told you that uh, cellulose is made up of beta glucose okay um, so I've actually given you the answer to part A already but I just want to explain really what is meant by form lots of people get a little bit confused as to the uh, the word used in this question okay uh, all it means here is isomer okay um, so the answer to part A okay would be uh, beta glucose if I just type that in for you there we go okay so there's the answer done um, if we move on now to part B it's asking you to name the bond form between the two hexose sugars now I just want to underline the hexose sugar okay and explain um, exactly what that means um, hexose sugar is a term I've uh, talked about in the, in the notes that I've produced. Um, remember that there are many ways to classify sugars. Uh, one way is to classify them according to the number of carbon atoms they have. Okay, and that's what's going on here. A hexose sugar is a sugar that actually has six carbons uh, in its structure. Okay. Um, so basically, if we look at the structures of starch and cellulose, as you know, starch is made up of alpha glucose, cellulose is made up of beta glucose. Both alpha and beta glucose are hexose sugars because they have six carbons. And if I just arrow the carbon number six there in the alpha glucose monomer and the carbon number six is in the same position in the beta glucose monomer um, of cellulose. Okay. Um, just to help you out again, um, that point there represents carbon number one. Okay, on the alpha glucose, and the carbon number one is in the same position there on the beta glucose uh, monomer. Okay. So again, you've got to be um, comfortable with the different terms used to describe uh, sugars. Okay. 
Okay, so that's hexo sugar explained. So, what's the name of the bond formed between the two hexo sugars? Well, let me uh, arrow them up for you. There is a bond. There's another one, and there's another one again. Okay, and the same for the alpha glucose. There's the bonds between the hexose uh, sugars or the glucose uh, monomers uh, in this case. Um, the bond, okay, is the glycosidic bond, okay, and if I just type that in for you, okay, there it is, glycosidic bond. Um, there are a number of bonds that you need to remember for your A-level biology, and uh, glycosidic, of course, is just the name of the bond that forms between uh, sugar or glucose uh, monomers. Uh, in, in carbohydrates. Um, okay then, if we move on to part C, um, now the command word in this question is state. Now you do need to uh, view my video tutorial on command words, okay, so I won't uh, go into the exact meaning of state in this video. Um, if you just check out the video on command words um, and uh, that will be explained in there for you. Okay, so part C then, you need to state two structural differences between starch and cellulose. Now there are many structural differences between starch and cellulose, okay, but there's a little um, trick to answering uh, this type of question, okay. Um, let, let me give you an example of a structural difference between starch and cellulose, okay. Starch is made up of alpha glucose and cellulose is made up of beta glucose okay now what the examiner wants in this type of question is that he wants you to state concisely the differences between one feature of starch and cellulose together okay um, so let me write in the um, structural differences I've just mentioned as the examiner would want you to do it Okay, so there's the answer in, if I read it out to you. Cellulose is made up of beta glucose and starch is made up of uh, alpha glucose. Now that answer states the two differences together. That's what the examiner would want to see. Okay, he wouldn't want to see, for example, cellulose is made up of beta glucose. If you just put that in, uh, you would not have achieved one mark. Okay. Um, so the examiner does want two structural differences, okay, um, so I'll type in another structural difference and we'll have a little chat about that. Okay, there's, uh, there's my second uh, structural difference. I've said cellulose has 1,4 glycosidic bonds, while starch has 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bonds, okay. Now if I pull up uh, the notes uh, that are in the app, okay. I've got a diagram here of a myelopectin. You've got to remember that starch um, is made up of two different polysaccharides. One is a myelopectin, um, and the other one, if I scroll up, is amylose. Okay. Now, in amylose, you have just the 1,4 uh, glycosidic bonds. Now, there's the 1,4 the glycosidic bond there. Okay. Uh, but in amylopectin, what you have is your 1,4 glycosidic bond there, shown by the red arrow. But you also have this 1,6 uh, glycosidic bond um, there. Now remember, wherever you get a 1,6 glycosidic bond, that represents a branching point uh, within the structure. Okay. Um, so that's a, a very... Uh, obvious structural difference uh, between starch and cellulose. If I just scroll down uh, to the cellulose uh, structure, okay, uh, there's a diagram of uh, cellulose, okay, and what you have is just the 1,4 glycosidic bonds present. Uh, there is no branching in cellulose, okay, so you do not get um, a 1,6 uh, glycosidic bond, 
Okay. Um, right. Okay. If we go back to the uh, the question now, we've uh, we've answered part C. We've got our two marks. But what I want to emphasize at the moment is there are a lot of other structural differences that we could have quoted um, or stated in this question. When we have a look at a mark scheme um, at the end, um, I'll show you uh, the number of different structural features that the examiner would have um, accepted. But let's finish off the question. We're coming on to part D. This is the last part. and. Um, it's stated now, starch is a compact storage polysaccharide. Cellulose has a structural role in plant cell walls. Hopefully you know that. Okay, starch is, is a storage polysaccharide. Uh, it's a storage of energy, of course, in the form of glucose. Whereas cellulose has a purely structural role. Okay. Uh, so now you're asked to uh, describe, and of course that's uh, that's another command word there. Describe how cellulose units, okay. Now the examiner's being careful here. He's called it cellulose units. He couldn't put uh, beta glucose here because he would have actually then given you the answer uh, to part A. All right. So the examiner's being very careful not to uh, help you out here. Which, which is right, I suppose. Okay, so the cellulose unit, of course, is the beta-glucose uh, monomers. Okay, um, so you're asked to describe then how cellulose units are arranged in a complete molecule and how this achieves, or how this arrangement gives cellulose a high tensile uh, strength. Okay, the... Uh, the major thing that uh, gives cellulose uh, its high tensile strength is uh, the large number of hydrogen bonds um, that uh, hold the structure together. So if I pull up the notes again, um, this is a simplified diagram really of uh, the structure of cellulose. So what you've got there with the green, uh, the green line uh, that represents your long straight chain of beta glucose monomers. Okay, and each uh, chain of beta glucose monomers is uh, held together by hydrogen bonds. Okay, so the hydrogen bond is being formed between adjacent or neighboring uh, chains of beta glucose. Okay, now those. Um, hydrogen bonds are being formed between the OH groups okay um, so there's an OH group there an OH group okay um, just to remind you that uh, in the structure of cellulose you have um, every other beta glucose monomer being flipped by 180 degrees yeah and that causes the OHs the OH groups to uh, point down and to point up. Okay, so that's why I've put the red arrows on uh, these notes to show you the, the alternating up and down arrangement of the OH groups. Now, those OH groups then allow these hydrogen bonds uh, to form between the neighboring chains. Okay, um, so that is uh, one marking point really uh, within this uh, this question is to state that there are um, long chains of beta glucose that are linked or joined uh, by hydrogen bonds. Okay, so if we go back to the uh, question, okay, and we'll just type that answer in. Okay, so we've. Um, entered one uh, correct answer there. Cellulose has long chains of beta-glucose monomers linked by uh, hydrogen bonds. Okay, um, so some other um, arrangements within glucose. Uh, we've mentioned some of them previously. You would have allowed uh, a mark for um, adjacent glucose monomers or molecules are rotated by 180 degrees as I previously mentioned. So we can actually type that on. 
Okay, so there's our uh, second answer. Glucose molecules are rotated by uh, 180 uh, degrees. Yeah. Um, you could have put uh, in that question, of course, uh, or in your answer, um, the term microfibril. Okay, I've mentioned microfibril there. Uh, just remember that a microfibril uh, is formed when you get many, many uh, long straight chains of beta glucose being hydrogen bonded uh, together. Okay, um, so they would have accepted the formation of uh, microfibrils um, as well. Okay, so in our answer then, the um, answer here, cellulose has long straight uh, chains of beta glucose monomers linked by hydrogen bonds. That answers uh, the high tensile strength part of the question. It's the hydrogen bonds that give um, the high tensile strength in uh, cellulose. And the second answer there is um, asking about or answering how cellulose units are arranged. Okay. Uh, we've said that there are glucose molecules are rotated by 180 uh, degrees. Okay, right. So that's the end of um, question three. If we have a quick look at uh, the mark scheme. Okay, so there it is. Uh, part number one there, or part A, uh, beta glucose. The next one is glycosidic. Now, part C. Um, as I told you earlier, there were a lot of options um, that the examiner would allow for the structural differences between starch and cellulose. There they are. You can read them yourselves. Um, please try and commit those to memory. Okay, it's quite an important um, set of notes there, really, for you uh, to make. Uh, just to highlight to you, right at the bottom of the mark scheme, the examiner has said, there must be a direct comparison. Okay, if you didn't make a comparison, uh, you wouldn't have uh, got the marks. Okay. Right on to part D then. Um, straightforward enough. We've mentioned the long straight chains and hydrogen bonds. We've talked about the glucose molecules being rotated by 180 degrees. Okay, we could have put in, as I mentioned, microfibrils. Okay, and there was also one other option there where you could have stated where the hydrogen bonds form between, and they were between the hydroxyl groups of adjacent chains. Okay, right, okay, that ends question three. I hope you found it of benefit.